All right, Black Tree TV, for this special edition of Soundcheck, we are celebrating 20 years of So So Deaf with the creator, my man, JD. How you doing, brother? I'm good. Congratulations, man. Thank you, thank you. Seems like I've seen you that whole time. Yeah, man, I've been, I've been kind of chasing you around. I, I was like an intern for four years and stuff. Now, chasing you around and just seeing you do big things, but... I feel good to have seen part of the growth growth internally, and then like step outside to see you still growing and doing your thing. Thank you. It's good. It's, it feels good. You know, what I mean, it feels good to see people, and to hear people say that they interned. That you know, that's that's you know, that's like a dream. Like I always dreamt of things like that. The people having employees and people saying that they got a little start from whatever I was doing. So. Yeah, man. I, I think that's like an important lesson that people don't really get these days. Cause I mean. You didn't, you didn't pay me to be an intern, but I got so much, you know, just experience from rolling around with you guys and going to Impact and just learning what y'all were doing. That it inspired, you know, me to keep on going. I think that's what people should take today and keep on doing, man. I, yeah. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. I had to say that on camera and uh, and for everybody else you gave, because I'm out here with, with uh, Mario Singleton and there's other interns out here that's that's been blowing up from from your camp. No, that's all good. I mean, I look at a, you know a bunch of people. I you know, like I said, when I talk about this show, I tell people you know, Lil John's performing. They like, well, what does Lil John have to do with So So Deaf? And I'm like, oh, I forgot. I didn't hear him, but he used to work there. You know, what I mean, he was a very very big important part of the music that came out. I remember when he had that Pathfinder, and he blew up after that base, <laughs> base All Stars too, and, uh, and and all that, man. Yeah, so, totally. so, so, how's the how's the camp looking today? I mean, we we started with yeah, Criss Cross, Brad, everybody early on. The music has changed, the the business has changed. I mean, you started a movement in Atlanta, yeah. but how how is uh, So So Deaf, 2013, and what what's, what what are y'all what are your future plans going forward for the next 20 years? I mean, my future plans is just to, you know, release music the same way that I always did. Um, you know, um, it's interesting because when you have a legacy, one thing I, you know, you don't know when you first start and what you learn when you get a legacy is that when you get this many artists, people don't, they want to talk about all the old artists more than they talk about what's new. You know what I mean? So, like, last year, you know, I released three new artists which is difficult, you know what I'm saying? I put out Brandon Hines last year. I put out Leah LaBelle last year. And I mean, it's all their first singles. It's not their whole album, but it's like, these are artists that are new and they came from no place, just like the rest of these artists that you know. And, you know, you put out a single and you start getting a traction going, videos and this, that, and third. And it's like, you still hear people saying, well, what's going on with So So Deaf? And it's like, yo, we released three artists. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what you want me to do? So. Um, it's constantly a thing where where um, where you're gonna have um, you know you're gonna constantly have music coming, especially this year. 2000, you know, 13 is a a lot of new artists, and and I think people are starting to want that, and I think this concert is 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 a birth of me bringing out new artists. I always hear people give like talk about all these artists that are big today. And they talk about Alicia Keys and how, you know, Clive Davis discovered her. But I remember when I was an intern, you had Alicia Keys on So So Deaf Christmas yeah. before they was even talking about Clive Davis. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you feel like you get slept on for some of the stuff and does that bother you at, at any time? Nah, because, I mean, you know, I was telling somebody this before you came that, that um, you know, it's it's my own mistake, the things that have happened to me and So So Deaf that you don't hear about because I thought, is that when you become, you know, at the top of the chain, uh, top of the food chain, or you get a number one record, that everything comes along with that. But information don't even come with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get a, you know, Escape had a number one record, and people didn't even have too much information about them. They didn't have, and it was because I didn't have a publicist at the time. You know, my own personal publicist. I was, you know, relying on Sony's publicist, and at the time, Sony had... That's, you know, who they had at that label. They had a bunch of other artists at, you know, at the label. Plus, I think Def Jam was there when I, you know, at the beginning, that when, when Escape came out, and it was like, you don't even realize that you think just because you got a number one record that people are supposed to stop all the rest of the work that they're doing and pay attention to what you're doing. So when you say that about Alicia, like, even that whole album, period, the 12 Soul for Nights of Christmas was a very, very, um, I want to say historic and and groundbreaking 
Christmas record of me doing something with new artists as well as the other established artists. And at that time, I didn't have a publicist. So, you know, when you see me doing all the press about this concert, a lot of people ask me, why are you out in L.A. doing press for something that's going to happen in Atlanta? And I just, I, the reason has a lot to do with that type of stuff. A lot of things that I did in the early days of social death, people didn't even get a chance to even know about. You know what I mean? If I would have came to L.A. and did some press about 12 Soulful Nights of Christmas, then people would have heard about Alicia Keys before Clive Davis, and then people would have said, oh, I remember when J.D. introduced her as opposed to, you know, him. But, I mean, you know, that's just things you learn. And, I mean, I didn't want – plus, I don't run around here trying to grab, um, you know, accolades either. Like, I don't care if people – know or not that Alicia, you know, I didn't care, you know what I mean? So, you bring it up now, I might care right now, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, speak, I mean, you say you don't care about accolades, but you've racked up so many uh, songwriter awards, producer awards, I mean, So So Def Camp is is, what, is one of the most ac awarded, you know, camps in, in the business, so again, hats off to you. What, what, are, what, are, what are the people to expect at this concert you know, and they're going to see y'all celebrate. What I mean, what what are we gonna hear? All the old classics with the new music. What's your plans for that? I mean, yeah, it's it's really no time to incorporate too much new music. It's all about you know, each person's hit, and you know, I think each person that's in the audience has a different time period when they was hit by so so death. So one person might have come up with crisscross. One person that's probably next to that person probably skipped that whole crisscross Brad Escape era and then joined on to escape, to Jagged Edge Kane. Um, you know what I mean? Then you're going to have a group of people that only started knowing what social death was when Bow Wow came, right? So it's like it's going to be multiple different people in the audience that are waiting for different moments, right? So I'm just going to hit you with the moments. That's all, you know, 20 years of the moments of the 20 years. Well, man, so so glad to have just been a fan of So So Death for 20 years and to have been, you know, blessed enough to have the opportunity to to, to work alongside inside the So So Death offices for some years. And, and I'm excited about what's coming up next because I, I think, you know, a lot of times it's hard to see greatness when it's live, in, you know, in front of you. You know what I'm saying? When you when you hang up your hat and your mic and your producer headphones, people going to be like, oh, this man, Jermaine Dupree got yeah, a yeah. million hits, man. But, you know, a lot of times people don't recognize. So I'm glad, like, we got to share you with our audience and maybe they'll go do some homework and find out all your all that's on in your dossier because, I mean, you, you've been doing yeah, it, bro. I, I, I think they know. Like I said, I think, I think the design of how I put my music out and the way I put things out is the almost way that, you know, like like somebody asked me, was I gonna do a behind the music for this thing, right? And I'm like, I don't behind the music. <clears throat> to me, is for artists that had a career, something went crazy in their career, and then they came back, right? right? I ain't did that. Like I just keep finding and making and doing whatever I'm doing, and then it's like my behind the music would be just about music, and I think they'll be like, this ain't cool. Cause he ain't went to jail. He ain't shot nobody. He ain't, you know what I mean. He ain't had no fight with a girl or like, you know what I'm saying. I don't do that. I ain't into all the stupid shit that go on in the music business. I'm just into the business part of it and making sure that the music is right. So I think that that has a lot to do with people not paying attention to the legacy because I won't. I won't really allow you. You know what I'm saying. It's like when I DJ, people come to my shows and they be like, I can't wait till you play money in a thing. And I'm like, sorry. <laughs> You're not gonna hear that tonight. Like, I'm playing this new music. It's new artists. It's got records out. What makes you think I'm getting ready to go back to the '90s in my set right here and get that going? And it it became so much that I had to start doing it. But for the most part, I used to be like, Nah, I'm not playing none of this. But then I see the response and the people, you know. So I give people what they want. But for the most part, I don't, I don't actually, you know harp on what we we've done you know what i'm saying i don't harp on it i don't go around telling people that justin Bieber's manager scooter came from so so there yeah you know what i mean i will tell you if you ask me but i don't like be throwing it out there like you know what i'm saying it's like i could have had him become like the the person that intro this press conference like that's what most people would have did like just to milk the cow all the way out yeah. just jd make sure you let's get everybody let's get scooter to introduce it <laughs> then the mayor like i don't really be doing it i just be more like you know i'm i'm trying to make sure that people pay attention to 
the action that's happening. And maybe that's, you know, maybe I should learn to milk the cow a little bit more. And then people probably won't say, well, you don't get the credit that you're supposed to get. But I'm I'm cool with my life, though, by the way. Yeah, I think everybody is. I think everybody's envious, man. But thank you for your time. Yeah, you. Keep doing it, bro. For sure. We'll keep on listening, watching, whatever you're doing, brother. Right. All right. Tuning out for, for Sal Check, Jamal Finkley, Black Tree TV, yeah. with the man JD, So So Deaf. The first step towards creating an improved future is developing the ability to envision it. Vision will ignite the fire of passion that fuels our commitment to do whatever it takes to achieve excellence. Only vision allows us to transform dreams of greatness into the reality of achievement through human actions. Vision has no boundaries and knows no limits. Our vision is what we become in life. Y'all know what this is. For more exclusive coverage of our latest news and entertainment, be sure to subscribe to our Black Tree TV channel and don't forget to click on either arrow on either side to watch one of our most commented videos. What are the, your friends and family, how have they reacted to you becoming, you know, this, this star? You, have you seen your friends treat you differently or your family treat you any differently? Um, I haven't seen them since, like, the nomination, but um, before then, they would just be like, oh, you came back, huh? You came back, you left me, huh? Didn't bring me any. So it's just like, it's like that, but I'm not.